Hi friends. Well, the news this week is that I hurt my back. Getting the motorhome ready to travel and we expected to be on the road by now, but going up towards Northern Arizona, visit some friends and other things. But in uh, doing all the things that you need to do to uh, de-winterize and get everything ready to go, uh, I strained my back. And I'm sitting out here in my car today um, because I have very good lumbar support and I have the seat heater on. So I have heat right there in my back where it hurts. And it helps a lot. Hot showers and walking is my solution. I do have a chiropractor scheduled to come uh, two days from now and give me an adjustment. But since I can't walk around and show you stuff, uh, I thought I'd just give you a couple of clips of places we've been four-wheeling, off-roading in the last, uh, well, a week ago. And uh, then I'm just going to sit here and tell you a story. It will be a JC travel story. Not a new story, but a very good story from years ago. What an amazing spot we stopped at. We're an hour into some fairly serious four-wheeling and uh, we've decided to turn around before we go down one more draw. I got out to get some good pictures. We are on the backside of the Santa Rita Mountains. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I have a lot more uh, video and pictures of our four-wheeling off-road adventures here in southern Arizona that I'll be making some videos of. But today, I wanted to tell you about a guy that we used to know. I say we used to know him because he's passed away, but... It all started many years ago when my son Peter and my wife Lynn maybe posted some pictures on the internet of walking sticks and other insects that they had as pets. And this guy called and uh, a relationship, telephone relationship mostly, um, a little bit of emails back and forth. Uh, because this was the early days of the internet. And his name was Jack. And Jack turned out to be an interesting guy. Jack uh, was, as I said, just a telephone email friend. We've never, never met him. And on one of our first... A uh, bug expedition trips my son and I down into Arizona from where we lived at the time in Portland, Oregon. We decided to go and meet this guy, Jack, in person. So we went to Jack's very, very rural property. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it's up around Kingman, Arizona. But it's way out in the sticks. And uh, he and his wife had moved there because uh, they wouldn't let them keep their wolf and their snakes in California any longer. 
I guess they had been discovered. And so they moved to Arizona where the rules about those kinds of things were a little more lax. Uh, where do I begin about the story of Jack? Well, uh, when we first arrived there, Peter and I, we were not prepared for Jack's property. Um, Jack had dug a trench all around in his property like a labyrinth. And then he'd covered it over. So essentially what you had was a tunnel that just weaved around through different parts of the property. And then he had ponds, and some of it was very nicely landscaped, and some of it wasn't. But I'm rolling my window down because it's getting a little warm in here. But uh, Jack and his wife uh, liked animals. So they had quite the menagerie. Uh, my first introduction to the wife was uh, she took me into their home, which had started out as a two-bedroom trailer house and grew like Topsy into a room built off of that section and a room built off that way. And, uh, anyway, uh, through the kitchen and down the hall of what used to be just a two-bedroom trailer but was now quite the complex into the back bedroom, which had a screen door on it. And to be honest, there was a smell. Well, as she opened the screen door, she kind of pushed me in and closed the screen door behind me as she was kicking the pit bull away so it wouldn't go into the room. And then her on one side, the outside of the screen door and me on the inside, she explained to me that, and I'm turned around looking back through the screen door, she explained to me that the pit bull couldn't go in there because the boa constrictors would eat him. And I turned around, and there are snakes, two of them. And this is not an exaggeration. They're this big around, and I don't know, 20 feet long, more, and you've seen snakes in the zoo, and big snakes like that move really slow. No. This one reared up its head about three feet off of the floor, looked at me, hissed, <laughs> and went backwards around the room that fast. And then looked at me again. And she says, oh, don't worry, they're just hungry. That was my introduction to this place. Well, I'd like to say it got better from there on. <laughs> they have a bobcat, and she thought it was funny to shove you up towards the bobcat. It's in a chicken wire cage, but as soon as you're anywhere near it, it's like, wah, it's after you. A bobcat. The wolf that made them move from California, just ran loose in the yard like a dog. And he wasn't aggressive or anything, but it was a, it was a wolf. Uh, and she had the pit bull, and she had another big dog. I don't know what it was. Maybe like part German Shepherd, part something else. Uh, what else did they have? Well, they had a cage back in there. Uh, amongst a couple of guest houses. They'd built little guest houses, a nice little room with a bed, and they called them guest houses. They weren't much bigger than the bed, but two nice guest houses with a nice, comfortable-looking bed there. But they explained that the last people who had stayed there had gotten bit by um, a Chagas insect, I'm not the bug guy, that's my son. I think it's a thing that gives you sleeping sickness. Anyway, yeah. Um, they had a cage with maybe a hundred pigeons in it. And the story was that they had got the pigeons going because they thought they could feed them to the snakes. But the snakes didn't like pigeons, they just liked chicken or something, so... This cage full of pigeons. They had an emu. You know an emu? Like a big Australian bird. 
and I'm encouraged to play volleyball with it. And the damn thing kicked really hard and hit me. What else? There were ponds that had, you know, lots of scary bugs in them. Um, oh, the tunnel, I started to say. So there's this tunnel maze thing that goes around. And um, one of the places, the pond was a plexiglass thing above the tunnel. So you looked up and you saw goldfish and stuff, tadpoles above your head. And you always wondered, well, did Jack know what he was doing? Were we going to get drowned? Anyway, uh, you're going around through this tunnel. And now we're talking about Arizona. There are scorpions, tarantulas. You go around the one corner in the dark, and there's a full human size coca pelle made out of paper mache. But the pack rats have eaten up half of it, so it looks like it's eviscerated. And they started building it with a Halloween skeleton. So you're seeing into the bones. And this is in the dark, as you're already scorpions, spiders, whatever, webs. This is not a house of horrors. This is just Jack's home. <laughs> and he's built stone walls and covered. So one of the places that we go into is like you got to crawl through a hole that's a round hole that's just big enough to crawl through and then you're in a room where there's a bench built all the way around a circular room and he called it a sweat lodge but we're sitting in there and he's telling us stories that i'm not going to repeat but jack um jack's father was a professor of anatomy at ucla and i think jack might have been affected by things that anatomy doctors talk about or do or let their kids see and some of Jack's artwork um, gave you the indication that there was an imagination inside that head that you probably didn't want to look at too closely anyway uh, there's all of this stuff and now I have to start with some more of Jack's personality Jack's a very interesting guy, and really intelligent, obviously. But uh, he's got stories. There's just things that you, maybe you believe him, maybe you don't. For instance, he said he spent two years in Haiti studying, studying drum rhythms. Now, Jack's one of Jack's income thing sources is that he builds African drums. He takes, you know, logs about, you know, two feet to four feet high, and he skins them with animal skins from Africa. According to him, he was able to get African antelope and African water buffalo skins from a contact he had at the Smithsonian Institution. And I'm repeating this stuff. I'm not verifying it. Anyway, he builds drums, African drums, and he's a drum, bongo drum player. Anyway, he says he's spent two years in Haiti learning voodoo drum rhythms, and um, he had been invited to make do a concert at Bullhead City Community College, and they won't let him do it anymore because... Uh, as he was playing his Haitian voodoo rhythms, two people got hypnotized and fell out of their chairs, so he can't play there anymore. Uh, Jack was a member of a band. Anyway, uh, in making these African-skinned, authentic drums, the wolf and the pit bull and the other dog, they're tearing up the scraps of this stuff and it's pieces of hide scattered all over the place now the wife she makes boots and mucklucks like 
uh, fur lined or sheep lined or wool lined slippers and as a matter of fact uh, she sells them and they're very expensive but anyway um, we're invited to dinner so as we're having dinner there are moon spiders crawling on the ceiling in the kitchen table area of this old trailer house Moon spiders, the body's about this big around, and then the legs are bigger than that. The body, this big around. Uh, as we're dining, um, we're instructed that we have to cut the steak with Neanderthal knives made from obsidian, just obsidian pieces, sharp. And he claimed that they were authentic Neanderthal knives. That's how we have to cut our steak. And as we're eating, a tarantula walks in, which Jack shoes back out the door. And uh, uh, anyway, um, the place could give you the creeps, legitimately, legitimately. So that night, uh, Peter and I are sleeping in my van out across the road and our sleeping bags in my van. In my van at the time, I had it made into a bed, and he slept on the floor, and I slept in the bed. And I'm laying there, we're trying to go to sleep, and I said, Peter, um, you were offered a very nice, comfortable bed in the little guest room there. Why are you out here sleeping with your dad in the van? Was it the, was it the emu? Was it the snakes? Was it the bobcat? The wolf? The chagas bugs? The spiders? What, what was it that creeped you out the most and got you sleeping out here with me? And Peter says, Jack. <laughs> Now, later on, we decided, after getting to know these people even better, that uh, Jack wasn't the really weird one. It was Sally. But that's another story. Jack also, I mentioned he was part of a... Hey, you there? Peter, huh? Yeah. You're on the phone, aren't you? No, I'm not on the phone. I'm talking to my friends on YouTube. Oh. I'm telling them about Jack. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I love that story. You like that story? It's one of the best. Because you were part of it? <laughs> it was a very weird situation. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.